This is a preview of our two-day 22nd, 23rd of May antique sale, which is next Wednesday. We're just setting up the room at the moment, just finishing hanging all the pictures. Uh, so there's quite a bit of tidying up to do yet, but we'll just have a look around and point out some of the things that I think are quite interesting. Starting with the James Bond, <coughs> excuse me, James Bond posters, um, following on from the Goldfinger poster that we sold in our last antique sale a month ago, uh, now came across another group of posters in a local house we were clearing. So this is uh, one of the most wanted film posters of them all. Um, here comes the biggest Bond of all, Thunderball, there he is. That's, that's a nice original quad film poster. Estimate of that is 1,000 to 1,500, something like that. Um, the one we sold last month, the Goldfinger poster made 3,000. We have another Goldfinger poster in this time. So I've got another little pile of these film posters all folded up as they all actually came folded originally, these film posters. So these aren't all Bond posters. I think there are three Bond ones in this lot. There's a Goldfinger, Thunderball, um, Casino Royale, and there's another one in there as well. So they're all being sold individually in next week's sale. They're in the picture section of the sale. Uh, let's have a look around the room here. Um, very nice 18th century long case clock there. Which is a particularly decorative case. I like this one. It's a Liverpool maker with a moon phase. So the moon dial rolls around up there. It's got this very unusual fretwork frieze here with a mirror behind it. That sort of brightens it all up, doesn't it? And uh, it's a nice, nice looking clock. Should be between sort of five and eight hundred pounds. And this is interesting. This again came from a local house we were clearing. It's, it's a very quirky item, but it, it's got a label here that says Emmet Festival Railway. And this is actually um, a miniature model of, of Nelly, which was a, a steam train that ran at the Festival of Britain in 1951, uh, designed by Roland Emmet. And we think this could be um, an original prototype model made by Roland Emmet, because it's absolutely handmade from scratch and painted and little bits of woodwork on here as well but it's a really nice model and it comes in its display case as well a little wooden box that's a really nice item isn't it difficult thing to value that one um what else we got a couple of nice um, georgian bachelor's chests there this one with its original handles and that one that should have the brass handles but now got uh, now has um, the wooden knobs and next to it here, a couple of nice sort of um, shipping items here. So this is a ship's binnacle, and it'll be probably between 1900 and 1920, this one, I should think, with a compass in the middle there. This is the oil lamp that, um, that lights up this at night, and a pair of military binoculars mounted on the top. Not sure if these originally started out life on here, but they're sort of Second War period, or... Yes, more period military binoculars there. Looks good, doesn't it? That should be getting on for a thousand or so, I'd have thought, that one. And from the same house is this ship's telegraph for uh, telegraphing the engine room. With, uh, to slow the ship down. There it is. That's nice, isn't it? That should be three to five hundred, the estimate on that one. And Lots of interesting things coming down the tables here now. It's a nice little walking stick there with a with a telescope in the handle. Well, that's good, isn't it? An ivory and brass telescope with a silver collar. It's quite unusual. And we've got um, a Japanese sword. Looks good. And these are David Linley glasses here. These are very expensive to buy new. Got quite a few sort of luxury items in this sale. Um, and tribal things. There's a lot number one in the sale. It's that Mouseman breadboard with a carved mouse on the border there. And it's a nice old one as well. And that should be around a hundred or so, hundred pounds or so for that one. And swords and military items. And lots of oriental things. Lots of studio pottery as well, as you can see down the table here. This is all from one house. And so there's David Leach and uh, 
included in that lot. The Troika, a Troika vase there, which is a nice size, nice large size one there. And all this over here, we have Moorcroft pottery, and then this, which is Dennis China Works. So there's lots of this. Look at that. A magnificent um, vase here, so quite modern, all designed by Sally Tuffin. And these would be many hundreds of pounds to buy new, these. And I think the larger pieces are estimated at sort of two or three hundred pounds each, and the smaller ones closer to a hundred, hundred and fifty pounds each. But that whole collection is Dennis China Works. What else we got? Louis Vuitton hold all down here. Very nice, large size um, Hastings dial clock there with a with a lovely um, concave, uh, convex um, glass front to it, which is nice and original. But it's a good large size one that. I'm not sure where it was from. Whether it was a shop, um, a shop's clock or a station clock or something like that. It's from a local deceased estate. That one. And lots of interesting things in the cabinet there as well. Mint and Majolica jug at the back of the cabinet there. And a Wedgwood transfer mug here on the side. This is magnificent. This is a, um, a Drew and Sons leather um, travelling case here. All the fittings are silver with enamel backs to them. It's absolutely complete, every item there, and all in really nice condition as well. And it goes with this Drew and Sons leather suitcase as well. So there's two pieces of luggage together, and they're going to be sort of four to five hundred pounds for the whole lot there. And lots more things along the table there. And then we've got more luxury items here as well wallets and sunglasses and Mont Blanc pieces in there. And we'll just whiz along here as well. Lots of gold. Sovereigns, half sovereigns, um, five pound coins, Krugerrands, more than we've had for ages in here in that sale. And there's lots of silver in this time as well. All this is silver in here, sort of a, an Indian silver tea set on tray. And these very fine James Noble um, oil paintings here, beautifully painted. With dew, with dew drops on the leaves of the flower there. This is Victorian silver tea set here. Very ornate set that should be, what's that, sort of at least six to eight hundred, probably a bit more than that. And a, an Italian Bitosi pottery mid-century um, vase there. It's quite fun, isn't it? And then these panels here, these two gilded panels that are egg tempera on gold leaf. They're by Sue Viner, there's her labels on the back. This is 2010. So it's beautifully painted, that one. And these are very expensive from the galleries. They're thousands of pounds. And this is an early piece of Moorcroft. It's a potpourri jar. It's in good condition as well. And it's unusually has a, a screw top to it. Usually these are just lift off tops. That's quite a rare piece, that one. That should be six to eight hundred. A very stylish Art Deco biscuit barrel there. What's that one? This is a Claris Glyph Bizarre rocket ship shaped biscuit barrel. That's nice. And then this is. Beautifully painted, but quite modern. Isn't that amazing? Detail in that painting. That should be sort of two to three hundred pounds. Uh, this vase is silver. A sculpture of horses there. I like that one. I think it's beautifully coloured. Good patination on that one. Um, there's lots of tribal things in this sale as well. This is a bronze urn here on a marble base, I think that's nice. That should be 250, 300. Lots of um, tribal masks 
and shields and all sorts here. And what have we got? We've got one here. It's a fertility mask. Shouldn't be holding it, should I? It's got a <laughs> it's got a monkey skull down here. Difficult to know how to pick this up actually. <laughs> Sorts of there's this is a Dan tribal mask here. And this one here, which is an interesting mask. It's in the shape of a baboon with a cooking pot on his head. Very interesting. And pictures, all sorts. Actually, these are worth a look. These are beautiful. Um, these are by Edwin Penny. And when you look at the detail of this, just have a look closer on this one. So these are watercolours, not prints, and not photographs, but they're absolutely intricately detailed. Look at the moss on the branches here. Just incredible. So we've got a whole series by Edwin Penny, who is dead now, the artist. Another one up there. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six watercolours. In consecutive lots estimated at two to three hundred but they could make quite a lot more and these on the top here are by both by Edward Sego another very highly regarded British artist another one who's dead as well okay so we're just going to change over now and then Will is just going to show you some of the jewelry and the watches from this sale Okay, so we'll continue with a few more of the lots, uh, mainly for this up the afternoon section of the Wednesday sale, in the antique sale. So we'll start off with a few of the watches that we've got in. Uh, as I know it's Father's Day coming up soon, I uh, thought I'd point out a few early on. Oh, wonderful. those people. <laughs> so uh, start off with this one. I mean, it's not for, not for everyone, but it is um, a very good quality wristwatch. Uh, it's an Invicta, and it's, it's called a Grand Diver wristwatch, and it's obviously... It's that sort of diver's style wristwatch, but it's an extremely thick um, case to that one. Look at that. But it's all in immaculate condition. It's in working order. It's got the box with it as well, and the outer box. And I think we probably only need to get about 150 to 250 for that one. So it's a very reasonable watch for, for the price. Another one here is in an Eterna. Slightly older style wristwatch here, but it's um, certainly a lot more wearable than the, than the Invicta. Um, so it's an automatic wristwatch. And it's got this um, reflection on the back here, look at that. With an open skeleton back to it. So it's an automatic wristwatch, so it'll wind itself while it's on your wrist. And it's a very simplistic style watch. And I think you probably at auction be looking at somewhere between three and four hundred for it but its original retail price is well over a thousand but a, a very good quality wristwatch there in working order as well and with the original box and then a few along the front here um, so this one here is called a pair cased uh, pocket watch uh, simply because it does it has two cases so this is one and this is the second um, and if you open it up here, you can see inside the movement in the center there. And this is actually, it says on here, Thomas Keeley of Battle. So this is a nice local maker here. With a beautiful case to that one there. And this is a Verge pocket watch. At auction, probably somewhere in the region of £300 for that. But it's just nice being, being local. Next to it here. An extremely rare uh, stainless steel Rolex pocket watch. He's hardly ever come up at auction. Um, I think it, we're hoping for somewhere between four and six hundred for it, but it could well make double that really. It's a, a very rare pocket watch and it's again very good working order. Another Rolex beside it here. Not quite your average sports Rolex, <laughs> but still another one with an extremely good movement inside. It's a nine carat gold case and a mechanical wristwatch, so you have to wind it yourself, but it's um, a very lovely movement inside there. About 1,000 to 1,500 for that one. And this one here, <laughs> a 
again, and not, not another everyday uh, watch. This is called a Goliath. So this is the under, other end of the spectrum to your normal pocket watch. And this one has four sub-dials on it as well. So they tell, so you've got a seconds dial here with a moon phase in the center. You've got a day, a, a date dial on the left here, a day on the right, and even the month as well. But they usually make around three, three or four hundred pounds at auction. So still quite wanted things. Um, and then a few bits of the jewellery. Quite a nice few flashy uh, stones there. What have we got here? We've got a, a nice 18 karat white gold baguette cut diamonds and round brilliant cut diamonds. Nice cocktail ring. It's probably between three and four carats of diamonds in that. So it should, should be around two and a half thousand, possibly three thousand for that. But a very nice chunky heavy gauge ring. What else have we got? We've got memorial rings with hair shanks on the side. It's woven hair in there. Nice art deco style ring. These are very popular at the moment. Very stylish. About 800 pounds for that, I think. 800 to 1,000. Snake jewelry. Again, another thing that's very popular. I think we've got about six lots of uh, various snake jewelry. We've got pendants and bracelets and rings, all sorts. Lots of lovely jewelry in this sale. And quite a few different opal uh, types as well. So we have a few black opals like this one, and white opals. Some lovely jewellery in here. And then just a few at the front to point out. Uh, so this pair of earrings to start off with, sort of 60s or 70s style uh, diamond earrings, which are nice clusters. But then you can actually, so they're screw backs, and I've taken the one off here. You can unscrew it. And the central comes out there, so you can wear them as solitaire diamond earrings, or you can put the, the backs on and have them as nice showy evening earrings. They're a beautiful pair of earrings there. Probably somewhere between two and three hundred for the pair. These you would usually probably see with um with a pocket watch on the end, attaching it to your waistcoat, but people seem to be wearing these as necklaces now. So they're more of a jewellery item than a, than a watch related item now. But they seem to be coming more into fashion nowadays. Another, another Art Deco piece of jewellery. Some lovely earrings. Probably three to five hundred for the pair of those. Another sort of Edwardian piece of jewellery here. With graduated opals. And these are rose cut diamonds as well. That's a lovely collar necklace there. And I think you'd probably be looking at somewhere between five and eight hundred for that. But it could well be a lot more. Very fashionable. And just to end it on a high note, <laughs> if that wasn't already good enough. <laughs> cue the sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> so this is... Um, an 18 karat white gold diamond line bracelet. And it's set uh, with yellow, fancy yellow diamonds in the center here, surrounded by um, lots of smaller halo diamonds as well. A very fashionable piece of jewelry that. And there's a certificate to go with it as well. And there are about there are over seven carats of diamonds in this in this bracelet. But an extremely high quality piece of jewellery there. This is the certificate to go with it. <laughs> and it was insurance. This is an insurance valuation. It gives you the entire description there. Two hundred and eighty nine round brilliant cut diamonds, all sorts, and the va insurance value of. £49,995. So we're expecting to get somewhere in the region of £15,000 for it. 
but it's an ex it's top of the top of the end um, very good high quality jewelry and um, certainly on fashion at the moment so that's about it for now but the best way to look through it if you do want to look keep on going uh, is on our website so go to burstowandhewitt.co.uk um, that's really the best way to look through all of these lots in our sale uh, so we've said before the sale is on Wednesday of next week so that's the 22nd that's the antique sale and the picture sale is on the 23rd which is the Thursday uh, the viewing days for those are the Monday which I believe is the 20th uh, so that's from 9 until 5 and on the Tuesday 21st from 9 until 7 at night uh, but please come and have a look and um, happy bidding thank you very much <laughs>